Think back to your first days at university in your EE class. Your professor probably drew a picture something like this. And this, this is the ideal transistor, controlled either by voltage or current. And he explained to you how circuits would work with a transistor with a switch that's controlled by other electronics. Now, we've been in the world, real world for a long time at this point, and we know that this is not a really very good model of a transistor. Transistors suffer from series impedance, known as RDS on, and they suffer from parallel capacitance, known as COSS. And most power supply designs, topologies, architectures, almost everything you come across in power engineering is going to be concerned with and limited by these two parameters. The losses caused by these components are for the COSS, it's half CV squared. And because it's a capacitance, it discharges through the RDS on when the switch is turned on. And so there's a frequency component. So half CV squared F are the losses associated with the capacitance. RDS on is only active when the switch is conducting. And the losses here are I squared R. We get closer to the ideal transistor if we can minimize COSS and if we can minimize RDS on. Gallium nitride does this for us in a way that allows us to make more efficient, cooler running, and uh, uh, more compact power supplies. Let me show you how. This is a, an axis. It's a little bit of a constructed axis, but I'm going to put physical size on the x-axis, and I'm going to put losses on the y-axis. Looking at RDS on and COSS for a, a, a standard MOSFET, you're going to have the losses with size are going to go down when they're related to RDS on. So these are your RDS on losses. As a transistor gets bigger, the losses get smaller. However, as the transistor gets bigger, you have increased capacitance. So it turns out that the, the losses due to capacitance go up with size. So at some point, with this is due to these are capacitive related losses and these are resistive related losses. And the best you can do is at this point here where they where they are um, where they cross. At that point, you have a minimum of capacitance and resistive losses combined. And of course, that has an that's affected by the frequency at which you choose to switch. So the green, the green here. Let's imagine the green is a standard, standard MOSFET. Now, gallium nitride is a very special substance, and that it's RDS on, it's specific RDS on, and that's the RDS on related to the size of the physical size of the device, is very low. And so that provides us with a far steeper decline of RDS on related to the physical size. And the marvelous thing about that is that the capacitance is also very low. So it still starts down here close to the origin, but it's a much shallower curve. So gallium nitride's losses occur at a minimum around about here. And you can use that to your advantage because there are things you can do with gallium nitride that are simply impossible with a MOSFET. So the benefits of the reduced losses when the combined COSS and RDS on losses is increased efficiency,
reduced heat dissipation and there's another benefit that comes out of this curve and that is if you remember CV squared F has this F component, the loss is related to frequency. And that means that if you wish, you can increase the frequency that the GAN switches at, and that moves this crossover point, but it still gets nowhere near where the MOSFET, uh, where the MOSFET is. And so you can increase switching frequency. Now, that's not always available to you because you tend to be limited to a certain extent by the magnetics and other um, parasitic elements in your circuit, but you're no longer limited by the speed of the switch. Okay, let's talk about increased efficiency due to GAN. I'm gonna draw an axis here. This axis here is the uh, load on the power supply, 100%. And I'm going to set that against the efficiency of the power supply. So up here we have 100%. But let's start at 80% because uh, that's, a, that's a good baseline uh, for the kinds of power supplies we're talking about. And there's my 90% point. So a MOSFET-based power supply is, has an efficiency starting in the um, at light load in the, in the uh, low 80s. This, uh, let's, let's take a, a 65 watt uh, adapter uh, flyback. Okay, and we're going to see it reaching something in the you know, approaching 90 percent. So let's let's call it 90 percent efficient at uh, at full load. A gallium nitride based power supply, particularly one that's mounted inside a um, an inner switch product that uh, has a a uh, tuned switching mechanism is going to start off higher in the light load and in the full load it's also going to be higher as high as 93 percent so what we're looking at here is a three percent improvement in efficiency just due to the use of gallium nitride now, 3% doesn't seem like a lot. 3% is, is a relatively small number. But when you set it against where we are on the curve, what you'll notice is it's 3% of 10%, which are the losses for the power supply. So you are saving 30% of the losses that you would otherwise be generating in your power supply. That's 30% energy saved. That's 30% of the uh, less energy you have to dissipate in your power supply. Less heat sinking, less size, longer lifetime, doesn't get so hot. So there are a, a variety of benefits. Now, the, um, the regulatory environment in which we, we operate tends to be you know, much lower. And so typically you can meet the regulatory guidelines with a MOSFET-based power supply. But with a gallium nitride-based power supply, you can build something that's far smaller and more compact, lighter, uh, easier to carry around, more power for the same size, however you want to think about it. Um, and that's a market benefit. To learn more about power integration's exciting new technologies, go to power.com.